Good day to all of you. I, Dr. Behrouz Mistry, consultant physician, will present to you a talk on looking at low levels of vitamin B12 and folate in the human body. Introducing you, B12 and folate or folic acid, which is commonly called are complex B, uh, vitamin B. They don't usually show deficiency unless it is a chronic issue. Now that what I mean is that B12 and folic acid are not produced in the human body. B12 is sufficiently stored in the liver. It is water soluble. Folic acid levels are low, say 15 to 30 milligrams in the body, half of which is stored in the liver and the rest is excreted out in the urine as it is water soluble. In a healthy body, as I said, you don't see the deficiency unless it goes in a chronic stage, which is at about three to five years. But as folic acid in pregnancy and pre-pregnancy, we have to supplement, which I will talk later, which is very necessary. But in children, on the other hand, you can have an acute deficiency because the children do not have that much time in their body to maintain the storage level and a sudden fall may cause problems in the children. So this is the introduction to you. The amount of folic acid which is used in pregnancy is about 400 to 600 micrograms, especially in the first trimester and pre-pregnancy also. The B12 in the infants, it's started at 0 0.4 micrograms and then gradually it reaches about 1 to 1.2 after one year age and then slowly in adults it is 2.4 micrograms and in pregnancy again breastfeeding it is 2.6 micrograms. Uh, the important functions of B12 and folate is mainly with the blood cells, that is the red blood cells, good concentration of hemoglobin. It also helps in minimizing iron deficiency, producing good platelets and good defenders, that is the WBC. B12 is also plays a very important role in the stabilization of myelin sheath in the nerves, which is necessary for neurological conduction, especially in the brain. Folic acid plays a pivoted role, as I say, in pregnancy, because if it is given early, it prevents scalp disorders, neural tube defects, and eliminates spina bifida occulta, which is a very grave complication. And it prevents early births and prevents abortions. So this is in a nutshell the role of B12 and folic acid in the human body. Now, let us see who are at risks of B12 and folic acid. Usually, as I said, that it is a chronic deficiency, especially B12. It is also known as cyanocobalamin, and folic acid is known by the name uh, vitamin B9. Elderly people, aged people who have 
nourishment problems, they are malnourished, or they have got malabsorption problems. By malnourishment is that there is no good intake of food because it has to be all the time supplied. It is not produced in the body. The B12 uh, dietary items which are high are meats, red meat, liver, poultry, fish, eggs, milk. And as well as in folic acid is usually found in legumes, leafy green vegetables, citrus fruits like lemons and oranges, and fortified cereals because in aged people the cereals are used, children they are used, so it is at a national level in most countries this is fortified so that you get an adequate amount of B12 and folic acid. Then it is said in certain studies that under 60 years of age, the deficiency manifestation is at 6% and over 60, it can go up to 20%. Second is GIT problems. Patients who complain of chronic diarrhea, malabsorption, this is where the lack is. Patients who have got atrophic gastritis, where the stomach lining becomes very thin. Secondly is gastrectomy, where a part of the stomach can be removed in certain illnesses. Then the malabsorption also can be at the intestinal level, where you have uh, celiac disease, sprue, then lack of um, uh, uh, inflammatory disorders like Crohn's and uh, other problems which are usually chronic use of alcohol which can and even ulcerative colitis chronic use of alcohol causes malabsorption produces a satiety value in the body patient lack for food also vegans and vegetarians they their diet is low in meat and poultry or none at all and they can have complications associated with alcohol we have got chronic pancreatitis gallstones these also affect the vitamin B12 absorption. Then chronic use of medication. People who have epilepsy, they are used to long-term phenytoin. Sometimes sulfur drugs are used like septrin. Then methotrexate, which is used in rheumatoid arthritis, mainly SLE, then we go down to metformin, which is an anti-diabetic drug. And also in other problems like autoimmune disorders, SLE for one, we have in this uh, setting and Graves' disease, the thyroid problems, we can have deficiencies. Now, low levels and high levels. If you usually folic acid, as I said, is soluble and it is excreted out from the in the urine. So usually temporarily they can have a little patient can have some distaste or anorexia bloating. But B12, very high levels, they interact with the drugs which I have mentioned, especially antacids and proton pump inhibitors. So you have to always monitor the levels when you are treating patients. Now, initially, as I said, 
there are three important places which we will talk a little in detail. First is the B12 deficiency and folic acid associated. This is occurs in elderly patients. Usually they have cardiovascular complications. They feel dizzy in the head, fatigue, muscle weakness, and instability during walking, palpitations, arrhythmias, etc. The role of B12 is to produce good RBCs, strong RBCs, and proper shape and size. If you have large RBCs, they are short-lived, they cannot come out of the bone marrow, they remain in the spongy layers of the trapped in the bone marrow, and therefore the hemoglobin concentration drops and you get an anemia which is large cell anemia called macrocytic or megaloblastic or pernicious anemia. In pernicious anemia it is mostly related to malabsorption where the, there is a lack of intrinsic factor. When the B12 reaches the stomach it is from the diets it is bound to a protein called intrinsic factor which is liberated from the parietal cells of the gastric mucosa. Then there are receptors in the intestine which holds these proteins and they reach the terminal part that is the ileum from where it is absorbed and it goes into the blood. So as we said malabsorption may hinder these steps and you can get low B12 and folic acid even, but mainly it is the B12. The second important function is strengthening of the nerves. Patients, you buy because the myelin sheath is very important. It is a covering and it helps in nerve conduction and lack of it causes the patients to be imbalanced. Their gait is affected then their vision is affected if the optic nerve is involved. Also, their mental status is affected. That is, they are not stable. They present in confusion. Also, dementia, irritability, all these are chronic B12 problems. Looking at the folic acid in pregnancy, what happens? Folic acid is given because pregnancy is a stress to the women. And in this, there is a rapid production of nerve cells, which is in for the, from the spinal cord. If there is deficiency, you get spina bifida occulta, which is a neural tube defect scalp disorders as well. So you have to place the patient adequately with folic acid levels. Then the patient usually presents with a pale skin and their eyes are sclerotic. Why? Because as I said that the cells are large and their breakage is easy which produces a lot of bilirubin in the circulation and this gets attached to the sclera giving a lemon tinge and they are not really jaundice it is the hemolysis which is going on then also their tongue is very beefy and red and all the bumps which are natural counter of the tongue is lost it is smooth and they have glossitis and ulcers as well. So this, all this can be prevented if you look at the signs and symptoms in the patient. Then coming to the management, which is investigations and treatment. Initially, when a patient presents to a medical practitioner in these states, the first test which at all levels is done 
is a complete blood count. And in the complete blood count, you will see a low hemoglobin level. The MCV, that is mean cell volume, is large. The cells are different, that is pocleocytosis in shape and size. And then also the platelet count may be low, the reticulocyte count may be low, the WBC may be lowish, which is also affected. So this is the presentation. Now you may think that it can be iron deficiency, B12 or folate. So you go a step further and you do the serum levels of B12 and the folates. And then you see that if you don't get a cause for low levels, then where do you look? You can go for parietal cell antibodies to show that this intrinsic factor can be low, or you can check the gastrin levels to see the level of gastrin. Then another important test, which is an indirect method in neurological patients is homocysteine levels. The homocysteine levels can go up, which raises a suspicious that the patient can have low B12 and low folate levels. It is usual practice to give both B12 and folate in practice to the patient, even if you have maybe folate acid low. The way to do it is that initially you replenish the levels in the blood quickly. Folic acid is given orally as a supplement, but B12 if the patient can tolerate, it can be given oral. If you want to make a rapid uptake, then you offer them parenteral injections, which are given intramuscularly. Initially, it can be daily for a week, and then weekly, then bimonthly, monthly, quarterly, bi-yearly, and yearly. And sometimes you lower them you stop when the levels are replenished and you are in a safe zone. But sometimes patients who have got malabsorption, uh, like um, malabsorption in patients who have got sprue colitis and all, they have to be given sometimes lifelong. But in doses, with the doctor from time to time checks the level and adjusts accordingly. Metastatic malignancies in carcinomas, folic acid is used because certain drugs are used in oncology which needs folic acid. So they, it is also a continuing effect to give them. Then one important point is that when you are treating uh, folic acid deficiency, as I said, you give B12 supplements because the anemia can improve and the patient can have all the reversible symptoms. But if they have neurological symptoms and you just administer folic acid or offer it to the patient, you mask the deficiency of B12. And with the result, that the nerve damage which goes on over a chronic period is missed or masked. And then when you find out it is too late and the patient goes in a permanent or irre irreversible stage. Also, the common anemia in the country is iron deficiency here because of low socioeconomic factors poor intake and in these patients you have to also check the iron levels sometimes we do not get direct results from the bloods and the hemoglobin is low there is no evidence of any chronic illness in the patient so in order to build up the hemoglobin you can offer B12, folate, and iron supplements for a period of minimum six weeks and recheck. 
if your hemoglobin is coming up that is good later on you can stop and recheck all these levels including iron separately so the b complex together with vitamin c and iron is also important in correcting iron deficiency or microcytic anemias and the normocytic anemias in the body is always secondary to diseases in the body which the clinician looks into the patient and then manages thank you very much do you mean nowadays post corona hmm? they are advising that folic acid should be given yes how do you think it helps the patient yes uh, it is a good question folic acid is necessary because this virus <coughs> corona virus covid in covid 19 it depletes the folic acid stores and as we have seen all the important functions so usually they check the ferritin levels they check the folic acid levels and even before checking they supplement the patient also with other things calcium and all but this is the role and therefore it also helps in the immunity of the patient and recovery is better in these patients who have been offered folic acid and other thing that is the role right. madam generally what would you suggest to cover these deficiencies by having natural nutrition ha, so i have always mentioned in the that. initially yeah. uh, usually the <laughs> folic acid is in dark green leafy vegetables legumes spinach etc also it is produced in citrus fruits like lemons and oranges and then fortified cereals and sometimes even bread and pastas which is done in other states in a national level so that those people who aged people who cannot have access at least they use the bread the cereals pastas even children and they can get it <clears throat> and then the b12 is usually in high protein food milk products meats red meat liver beef and then poultry is there fish is there these are the real sources of b12 so that is what in vegans and vegetarians you may anticipate a deficiency so you have to look into this thank you very much thank you